What is going on there, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Poe and the host with the most chins. Today we're going to be talking about the top five free-to-play shooters. So we are going to be counting down from five. Number five in the list is Ghost Recon Phantoms. So let's just dive right in and talk about why this one caps in at the fifth place spot. Now, to be fair, to be honest, there aren't many third-person free-to-plays out there, especially those on the caliber of this game. This game stands out in very little ways, but significant enough for you to appreciate them. This game has three playable classes. You have your recon, your assault, and your support, each of which have a couple of their own abilities. As you can see, I have the ability to kind of look through walls and, and locate the targets. Each class has their own active things that they can do and use to benefit their team. And I consider this game a semi-tactical third-person shooter. And the reason I say semi-tactical is because it has a really high dose of tactical elements anything from the in-game VIP which sometimes you have those casual players that are okay with having a joke and then other games you got a group full of politicians that just want to tell you everything so to be fair it's got its aspects third person always adds this unique feel to a game most shooters first person you just run around you shoot the first thing you see this game it takes a little bit more patience it takes a little bit more communication and generally it's about observing the map checking your corners, doing work before you actually go out there and put yourself in danger. So, this one cracks out the list at number five. So now we're moving on up into number four, coming in with Blacklight Retribution. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time defending why this one deserves to be on everybody's top list. This thing has got a few things under its belt that other games aren't capable of doing quite yet. One of which, the fact that it's also already on next-gen consoles. It's one of the first free-to-play models implemented. You have other games that are going to be coming to like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One sometime in the near future. Games like Planet Side, so on and so forth. But for right now, this game is available on console too. And you can't say that about a lot of free-to-play models. And that's extremely exciting. On top of that, this game adds a couple unique elements to it. Not only is it futuristic, but it moves great, it, it's well, they got little locations on the map for you to refuel, depots if you will, where you can either buy things to upgrade your arsenal because of the you know success you've been having in-game, or replenish your health or your ammo or something like that. On top of that, as you can see right now, I'm kind of peeking through walls, so hex. It's actually a really cool element. I believe they call it the HRV. Now, the HRV is, is unique to me because... Well, to be honest, it lets you see through walls. How many games generally give you the possibility to wall hack? Now, why this stands out is it's basically a counter camping mechanism. It lets you know where the fight is. It kind of pushes you and draws you to the fight. If you see orange across the map, hey, guess where you're going to go? So it kind of keeps the game fast paced. It eliminates the likelihood of people camping because, well, what's the point of standing still in a tower if everybody knows you're there? It's kind of obvious, right? So again, on top of all of the great things that this game has to feature, it's got really unique features, really unique attachments for your weapons, and a customization that is just unrivaled by almost any other game out there. It's just so in-depth, you can customize the receiver, you can add the muzzle, stock, check yes for it to be an organ donor. This thing just does everything, and more camos than you know what to do with. So... At the end of the day, this game is an extremely unique piece of equipment that's out there. It's one of the best free-to-plays in the business right now. The fact that it's available on next-gen is awesome. Now, the one con to this game, the one real flaw that a lot of people consider just kind of annoying, to be honest, is this game can be pay-to-win. Now, I generally consider this game grind-to-win. Somebody that's played it enough like I have knows exactly if you put enough hours into the game, you can have some pretty awesome equipment for yourself. Now, if you've never played the game before and you put a couple US dollars, or whatever the hell your currency is, into the game, you could set yourself with a major advantage. Unlike a lot of other games where... You know, the default weapons do pretty solid, and they're okay in this game. But actually putting money into the game could set you apart from the others just like that. Now, that generally tends to be a flaw to a lot of people. To me, not so much. Put your time into it, you will reward it. After all, it is a free game. Third up on the list is Team Fortress 2, a game that needs no introduction. But hell, we're going to do an introduction anyways. Now, hopefully most of you guys know what this game is. For the rest of you guys, I sure hope... You hope there's no one that is like and has no clue what this game is right now. You're like, what is this game? You just need to stop. You were like living under a rock your whole life. That happened to be living under another more heavier rock. Like this game should be self-explanatory. It's a very cartoony, fun arena type based shooter. Very futuristic, kind of weird flamethrowers and everything like that. But it's just a really, really fun casual game to play. There's just no concern. You just run in there and you shoot things. It just doesn't it doesn't even take a brain. I've got a pet caterpillar that plays this game. 
It's really, really comfortable to play. It's tactical if need be, if you ever wanted to. But at the end of the day, it's a fun game. Now, another great feature about this game is it's not even remotely close to a pay-to-win. In my opinion, even though you can buy certain things on the community marketplace, everything is really, really cheap. There are, like, skins and keys that you can buy to open up cases and get all of that stuff over time and possibly get something really, really nice. But that's entirely up to you guys. So it's not one of those things where you buy weapons and you're instantly a better person. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to amplify your game whatsoever. So that's always a good feature. In the end, it's just your traditional old-fashioned arena shooter. You shoot things, people die. End of story. I know. So yes, this is another must-have for your Steam library. It's a beautiful, fun game. Just casual to play here and there. But again, you guys probably already have the game anyway. So we're going to push it on up to number two. Planet side. So I'm gonna tell you guys some, just to be honest, and I'm okay with this. I'm I'm open about this. I'm kind of a noob at this. I'm kind of a planet side virgin. Now I first played this game hell maybe a year ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that. A very very early release of this game, and I really didn't like it, and I was turned off by one thing. There was really no end game, and what I mean by that is you play your Call of Duty or your Battlefields, the games are gonna last 10 or 15 minutes. This one just never ends. It just doesn't end, and I don't know, I just may be selfish or picky or, or whatever it is, but I need a nice little toad-curling climax. I need to know that the game is over and we did good. There needs to be an end for me. This is generally just a giant game about map control. And at first I was like, I wouldn't want to do that. I want to know, I want to see my kill death, I want to know what I did, I want to earn kill streaks. You know, I just felt like in a shooter, there needs to be a finish to it. This is a giant continent, giant world that you have to basically take over and control different parts of the map. And you do that in a massively multiplayer online first person shooter that is Planet Side 2 or Mumps for short. This thing is insane. As you can see right now, this is like a hundred man battle just happening in a part of the map. And there's another hundred man battle happening elsewhere. And that's what's really, really cool about this game, is that you would think for such a large map, for such a large scale, there wouldn't be a lot of action and activity, but there is. There are vehicles, there are armor, there are anti-armor for the players that can pick their classes. There's decent customization. This game is really, really incredible. And at first, like I said, the first time I played the game, I wouldn't have even considered it for my top five. But now after playing it, just to test it out to see whether or not it would be worthy to have in this video alone... I have fallen in love with it. I really do like the game, and the first time around, I didn't like it. Just, it wasn't for me. So, with that being said, hopefully that encourages you guys to maybe give some of these games a go. Like, like I said, before I had even tried this game for this video, I would have never given this chance to this game, and I am now. So again, very large-scale game. You are a part of the war, versus just being a little battle, 6v6 or 9v9, like a traditional shooter. This is just a massive-ass fight going down right now. And you're fighting over the entire continent. So that makes it seem really, really unique, really, really fun and easy to go with. Again, the customization is great. Another cool feature is this game is supposed to be released for the PlayStation 4 this year. Not sure about the Xbox One, but the fact that their game like this, this kind of scale, is going to be available on next gen is exciting. Not only for this game, but for the future of other games like this for this scale and player count. So now for the epic finale, we are moving into the number one slot, my most favoritest ever game in the free-to-play genre for shooters, America's Army Proving Grounds. Whoa, 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 guys, calm down, calm down. Before you guys are like, what is this game, or why is this game, why is this better than Planet Side 2 or anything like that, give me a moment to defend my case. Here we go. So I'm sure many of you guys have never even heard of this game, and I've been playing this since, like, forever. I came out of the womb two weeks early just to play this game. I, I really credit this game for the reason why I started getting into competitive gaming, the reason why I gave games like Battlefield and Call of Duty a chance, because this was my first actual competitive modern shooter. Before this, I played games like Halo and Unreal Tournament, which are extremely futuristic, kind of high, fast-paced games. This one was the one that kind of opened the doors to that experience for me. So again, of course, I may be a little biased. I may just love what it is. But the game is, in fact, a free-to-play. It's downloadable on Steam. Very small file size to a quick download for most people. It is currently in the beta, though. So there's going to be a lot of good things coming. Now, when I say this game's a free-to-play, I mean it's a free-to-play. I've been playing this game for years, and I can't ever remember a time where they had microtransactions or moments where you had to pay money to do anything. This game has been, as long as I have ever known it to be, a free game at its core. It was technically sponsored 
and paid for by the U.S. government as originally like a, a recruitment tool to teach kids exactly about some of the educational aspects of the game and maybe encourage them to kind of enlist kind of sort of deal. That's what it was originally intended to be. And in turn, they created a game that was free to the public. Now, why I like this game? It adds a competitive aspect that a lot of other games have kind of lost touch with. Nowadays, every game is about creating futuristic weapons, upgrading the arsenal, adding all this and all these equipments and everything like that. They generally just kind of dilute what the game truly is. Games were greatest, in my opinion, when they were simple. You remember Call of Duty 4 or Bad Company 2? You had, like, no attachments on the gun. No crazy equipment available, no crazy kill streaks. It was just you, the gun, and simplicity. That's what this game is. You have your lean and peak features, you have your sliding features, and it has one cool new addition that I truly like. I guess it's not technically new, but it's kind of a revive and secure function. Because this game is based on kind of a training simulator, one cool feature about this game is during the life, whether or not, you know, unless you were shot in the head, you have the ability to be revived by your teammates. So if I kill a guy and I leave him there as bait, there may be another guy, another enemy that comes up and tries to revive him just to, you know, get another guy back into the fight and have better odds to win. But again, if I go up to him and I secure him, I take him out of the fight. So it adds this unique aspect. Do I use somebody as bait? Do I secure? Do I need to pay patient? Do you need to do what you need to do? Another cool aspect about this game is, like I said, it is an extremely competitive game. When you get inside the VYP and you start doing things, it's not a game you need to take your friends in to play because everybody in the game is going to be communicating. They're going to say there's going to be two rushing this way, there's going to be one on balcony, etc., etc. That's exciting to know that you don't always need a group of friends to play with to have fun and enjoy a game like this. So again, extremely tactical, extremely free, and extremely fun to play. Now... One other feature that you have to understand is this game is still currently in beta. It's going to be released soon. They have it uh, extremely available to the public. You can create your own maps and everything like that. And most games, again, like I said, when money is the process, they release things in DLC. You're not too accustomed to seeing, you know, games like this that are going to allow you to do that kind of stuff. You have the bleed out features. You guys just saw that I bandaged myself. So again, you can tell that this game is pretty unique. It's pretty fun to play. Very simple at its core, but tactical. And it's just a shooter. So again, hopefully you guys take your time. It's, it's, in my opinion, the most underrated free-to-play out there. And it tops my list because it's my favorite. Simply put, it is my favorite. So thank you guys for the support on this video. I truly appreciate it if you guys would hit that like button as it does always help the channel out a lot. Try out some of these games. Let me know what would be in your top five free-to-play list. And tell me why above all. Have a great day, guys. Stay moist.